Labor and a lot of these uh, pro labor and uh, pro worker initiatives are causing some concern in the business community that it could really derail Michigan's job growth. And uh, among those that are concerned about this is a new group called the Great Lakes Growth Coalition. It was launched yesterday. The goal is to educate the state legislature about the broader economic risk that might be in place now with these very pro-labor initiatives. And we welcome in Wendy Block, who's a good friend of ours. She's vice president of business advocacy and member engagement for the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. Wendy, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We have seen some proposals. I mean, even today, the headline is that uh, it's not necessarily uh, anti-business, but it will make things more difficult for public education, is that uh, there is are much more broader issues that teachers can negotiate in their contracts with school districts. And I know a lot of superintendents feel that it has dramatically shifted the balance of power there and their ability to contain costs. This is just uh, the latest in a, in a string of pro-labor steps that could uh, backfire on the, the economy. What does your group see happening? Yeah, so over the last 10 months, uh, the business groups that uh, we joined forces with yesterday on the Great Lakes Growth Coalition uh, really have been trying to work with this new majority in Lansing. We've been trying to work in the middle and find positive policy outcomes for our members and for the state and its citizens. And, you know, the governor has spent a lot of time talking about her vision for growing Michigan's population and making Michigan a place everyone wants to call home. Uh, but we're increasingly concerned that that, um, you know, that goal, that vision, which we very much share, uh, really direct, is in direct conflict with what is happening in the legislature, uh, with the legislature putting Michigan on the path to economic and population growth and, and frankly, risking that, right? So we came together yesterday to launch this new coalition because we're hearing from business owners, small business owners, and others across the state who are frustrated with what is happening in Lansing and just this idea that like somehow being anti-business um, is somehow going to help grow our state and just want to amplify uh, our concern. So Wendy, you, you, your group all you are also talking about like, seems like it's like a mad rush to approve these bills. Uh, you know, the, the family and medical paid leave, the clean electricity requirements uh, and, and letting municipalities set local minimum wages that, that they're trying to get these things done, you know, really quick. Usually they go until December. The session goes until December, but they're trying to move these through really fast. And you guys are, are, are not good with this. You want them to kind of take their time and really go through these these bills. We do. So, you know, there is a bit of a mad rush right now uh, due, to, due to some external factors. You have two members in the Michigan House who are running for mayoral seats and very well could win those seats in early November, meaning that their majority, the Democratic majority in the House, uh, is at risk. And so this time right now, this next month, is really um, kind of being seen as a bit of a mini lame duck session, um, which is kind of that typical time where a ton of stuff just gets pushed through. People don't even have time to read the bills. Uh, and really our ask with all of these proposals is, don't rush. Like, you've got to slow down, listen to both sides, seek to understand the impact, and then act. But there just seems to be a desire to act quickly and, and kind of figure things out as we go. And we just don't think that means, you know, equates to good public policy. Wendy, part of the importance of this coalition, you say, is the Coalition for Career Freedom, the ability of workers to choose independent contractor work. Go more in depth there. Why is that important? Yeah, so there is legislation pending in the Michigan House that uh, would severely restrict the ability of workers across all industries to act and work as an independent contractor. Um, it follows the lead of something that California did a number of years ago. And in fact, their law now contains over 100 different ex exemptions. Uh, the Michigan law has no exemptions. So this has been disastrous, not only for businesses, who rely on independent contractors, but also independent contractors themselves, people who enjoy the flexibility that comes along with being an independent contractor, including that freedom to set your own hours and certainly the financial freedom to maybe work multiple jobs and to maximize income. And so this is a big one uh, for our membership and for the business community as a whole 
uh, just because we're not even sure what solution or what problem lawmakers are even trying to solve with this bill, other than to just kind of turn this independent contractor business model upside down. You know, I, I, I'm kind of curious on this, Wendy, because it kind of implies when you say you're, you're going to educate the legislature that you already haven't been doing that. I mean, I know that you have been out there passionately telling them, especially in the debate over prevailing wage, just what the consequences of this would be in terms of chasing away jobs and chasing away businesses. So it's not like you guys have been silent. Why do you think that this coalition will have a, a, a more effective voice than what you've already been doing so well? And that, look, the, the, the simple fact is with the political um, paybacks that the Democrats feel that they have, that they'll even listen to this. Yeah, I mean, we do think that lawmakers are listening. Um, look, you know, some of these things, uh, I think a lot of people thought were going to come flying out of the House and the Senate even this spring. So we have um, kind of been working over the last couple of months to really help educate lawmakers. This coalition is about building a bigger tent into bringing in more groups beyond the Michigan Chamber and the Michigan Manufacturers Association and the Detroit and Grand Rapids Chambers. This is really about bringing in countless additional groups and businesses and individuals to add to that collective voice. And you'll see if you go to greatlakesgrowth.com, there's a lot of different individual coalitions under the big coalition. And that's really about trying to amplify uh, the, as many voices as we can on this issue and help lawmakers understand that this isn't just about Lansing's lobbying community and mm -hmm. what they're saying, but a lot of people back home in their districts who are echoing these same concerns. And so that's really what this is about, is trying to amplify that voice and give a place uh, for people to go to kind of learn more. Wendy, your group says clean energy future, vitally important, but you have to be realistic in how you get there. You have to balance it all when it comes to business and jobs in the state, right? Right. Yeah, so um, on the clean energy debate, there is legislation pending in the Michigan Senate that would move us towards very aggressive new clean energy mandates. And we're certainly not uh, climate deniers. We understand uh, the need to kind of pursue a clean energy future, but we also need to do that in a way that is responsible, that we're balancing uh, clean energy and the need for that with the ability to keep energy costs affordable for residents, for you know, for businesses, uh, both commercial and industrial, and also to make sure that we have reliability in our energy, right? I mean, if you think about, um, and well, anyone, right? If, whether you're a resident or your business, when you turn on that light switch, you want that light, that power to come on. And what is uh, what they're talking about here very well could jeopardize the ability to have reliable energy for our state's residents and businesses. So we're we're trying to talk about this issue and help people see that these things sound great on paper. Uh, moving to aggressive new mandates um, may sound appealing to folks, but if you aren't careful um, and you don't do this right, you're really going to threat, threaten that affordability and reliability. Well, and there's you know, the affordability piece. You know, there was just the, the Michigan Public Service Commission just released a study in the past two days saying that the utilities are on track to meet their 35% renewable goal by 2025. <laughs> but uh, doggone it, there wasn't much in there about affordability and how much this is going to cost rate payers, especially uh, business rate payers down the road. Well, we welcome more information and more insights on this, especially from those, as you point out, that are, are local. But we know there are deep special interests that are, have great expectations of the new Democratic majority up in Lansing that have their story to tell as well, Wendy. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Wendy Block of the Michigan Chamber and part of the new uh, growth organization. And what was that website? It is Great Lakes Growth. Dot com where you can find uh, more information and, and look at the broad coalition here.